Assalamu alaikum. My name is Majid, aka MBH. For those of you who know me only online, I like to move my hands a lot, so I'm just going to park this mic here. If my voice is not clear, let me know. Um, I'm going to talk about blockchain stuff, maybe you've heard about, maybe not. Bitcoin, a currency, and some other things, just to explain the whole ecosystem. There will be information for traders. There will be information for investors. There will be information for technology guys, uh, programmers, etc. So I'm going to brush briefly across everything. There will be no details, no technical discussions. Um, before I start, no video recording. Okay. Uh, don't take pictures. The session is going to be recorded. I'm going to post the slides along with the, with the audio recording. Okay. The registration outside for the email addresses is optional. So if you don't want to add your email address, this is up to you. Uh, your privacy is uh, conserved and respected. Your background is financial? You will see. Okay. So I'm going to brush briefly across these topics. I'm going to explain what is the difference between a digital currency and a cryptographic currency. Uh, we're going to talk about, talk about the fundamentals of the Internet of Money, a.k.a. Bitcoin and all the other things that are like it. We're going to talk about the differences between different currencies, the uh, crypto, cryptocurrencies, um, real-world use cases, how you could use them in the real world. Are they just a fad that people are just throwing money at them and they're just making a crap load of money more? Or there are actual use cases for these coins? We're going to talk about legality and regulations, anti-money laundry uh, stuff. Uh, is it legal? Is it not legal? Etc. Tips for everybody from all uh, from uh, all aspects. Then how to do buying and selling locally in the market here, just to help. And then the local community that is available in Kuwait. Okay. So my background: I started in 2010 with Bitcoin. I, I heard about it in 2008. Please, no video. Oh, no video. Yes. yes. No video, no pictures. If you see somebody taking one, take it down. Okay. Uh, I heard about it initially in 2008 when the white paper came out, and then there were the uh, forums, etc. Uh, I did not put money into it until 2010, so I was a very early adopter. Okay. Uh, it was very interesting watching everything from the ups and downs of Bitcoin, from the from point one dollars to one thousand two hundred dollars, and then the crash down to hundred dollars. So I lived through all that time. It was quite fun. Um, I'm a Linux and open source software advocate. So Linux is an alternative operating system to Windows. Uh, I'm a privacy and anonymity advocate as well. If you, have, uh, if you know me through my online nickname, you will also know my blog. So I helped people protect their privacy online, communicate between two people anonymously, don't exchange data, sell stuff anonymously, etc. If you want to do something anonymously, right? So as long as I don't know the details, I will help you. If I know the details and it's malicious, I will not help. Uh, I'm an IT architect, so I handle uh, data centers. I uh, work for an IT provider in Kuwait. I look after servers, storage, networking, virtualization, software stack, etc., software defined data centers. Personally, I fixed file systems. I did my own gig for a year before. Uh, so I'm technical, I'm a computer engineer. That's my background. Um, I'm not a very good trader, but I'm learning. The market is very lucrative. Anything that is mentioned in these slides is not an endorsement. I will mention a few things that I have traded in, personally. Again, that's not an endorsement or, or a message to you that you should also invest in it. Okay? Take it at your own risk. And then, um, no financial advices here. I will point where you can find stuff. And then it's up to you to do your own homework. 
So let's talk about digital money versus cryptocurrency. Digital money, uh, I came into the market around where this was still circulating, Libre, uh, Liberty Reserve. E-gold was dying at the time. E-gold came out in the late 1990s, 1998, I think, or 1997. It, became as a, it came out as an actual business where you can buy gold for cash and then keep it as a digital token. Uh, however, with time, because it was easy to exchange the e-gold tokens between people, then it became easy for uh, drug people to exchange the money, etc., for these kind of transactions. And then the company itself started dwindling down and there was a lot of fraud. Liberty Reserve was created somewhere in the Caribbean, if I'm not mistaken. So it was al already in a place where it's a tax haven, uh, protected money, and... Uh, Again, it was, it was actually from the start designed to be for money laundry kind of use, okay? Uh, the owner was taken down sometime in 2009, 2010. He has laundered more than $5 billion at the time, which is a small amount once we come up to the uh, other markets in a bit. So these two were tokens that were privately owned. So a single entity, a company, or a person created these tokens, just like a central bank, he creates the tokens, and he has full control over these. So as soon as Liberty Reserve, the CEO, got busted, everybody lost their money. They cannot exchange them out, they cannot do anything, okay? Cryptocurrencies, crypto is short for cryptographic. Uh, that's a, a branch of mathematics. Um, examples are bitcoins. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Dogecoin. Uh, some of them are parody. So people just made them to mock the community. Some of them are, have actual use cases. So, some of them are used as a platform for transactions. So there are multiple use cases for these things. These came out, Bitcoin came out as a white paper, which is a research in 2008, published anonymously by a genius mathematician and a cryptographer. Then he handed the source code and everything else to a community of well-known cryptographers to take over the code and publish uh, the, uh, the software itself. Ethereum came out in 2014 with a lot of enhancements on top of what Bitcoin was offering. Ripple uh, is a financial asset transfer system that's a very big word. We'll come to it at the end. Dogecoin is a parody. So I think in 2011 or 2012, people just took the code of Bitcoin, <coughs> copied it, and modified it, and they called it Dogecoin. Doge is actually the name of a dog, a Shiba dog. And they just called it Dogecoin. And ironically, India, the country, for a certain time, considered Dogecoin to be a real coin. So... Let's talk about the fundamentals of Internet of Money. Internet of Money is just like the Internet of Things. You have some stuff, you connect them over the Internet. So they're all talking to each other. So cryptocurrencies are codenamed as Internet of Money because you have a lot of technologies that are interconnected for the sake of money. Okay? So what is a blockchain? Very simply put, a blockchain is a ledger. You have a book where you write all the transactions, and that is blockchain. Okay? Uh, it could be public, it could be private. Bitcoin is an example for a public ledger. Um, throughout history, IBM was the first organization or company to take the code of blockchain, not Bitcoin, blockchain, and then create a project called Hyperledger. So IBM envisioned, I think in 2013, envisioned that this technology that is called blockchain that is having real-time transactions worldwide is very lucrative. So they took it and they forked it and they made a, a public organization or a foundation. They called it Hyperledger. You can go to hyperledger.org if you want to explore more. And it's aimed at financial businesses, uh, asset management, like real estate and stuff. Uh, some of them are looking into whether it benefits healthcare or not. These are the types of blockchain. 
you have a centralized uh, topology. So all the nodes connect to a central location. Okay? So this is an example for telecoms. All of us connect to a single telecom. If you're a subscriber of that telecom. Um, you have a second example is the decentralized. Decentralized means you have some central hubs that people connect to. So if you lose this central hub, everybody who was connected there will lose the connectivity or access. And the final is the distributed. Distributed means there is no single point of failure, there is no central, a single point of uh, centralization. It is a completely distributed system where everybody can talk to everybody. It's very important that you... Okay. I like pointing, man. Fine. Okay. Okay. So distributed means uh, complete tolerance of any any kind of failure. This is important to distinguish between solutions. When you buy a blockchain-based solution for your organization or for the country, for the business, for banking sector, etc., it's important to differentiate <coughs> because in some cases you do want a centralized control. In some cases you are okay with a decentralized system and in other cases you do want a distributed uh, setup. I will go over some examples of, of use cases, and you will see where these are used um, across the current ecosystem, okay? So let's talk about Bitcoin itself. Uh, as I said, it came out in 2008, and then uh, there was a lot of attack, a lot of fear. They called it a money laundry system. Uh, I will be very honest with you that the prices, the value of Bitcoin started going up from $5 up to $1,200 in one year. I bought them when it, w when it was $19. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the reason there was high demand is because of the underground drug markets. Uh, specifically Silk Road, if you have ever heard of that name, it's a very well-known name. Silk Road was operating for three years. They only accepted Bitcoin, so you could only buy with Bitcoin. Because at the time, people were thinking that Bitcoin was anonymous. All the transactions were Bitcoin-based. The website was anonymous. You can log in, they cannot see your IP address, they don't know where you are, who you are, etc. For registration, you have a username and password, no email access required. I did log in to Silk Road. I saw um, heroin, I saw crack cocaine, I saw marijuana, I saw ecstasy. Everything was being sold in terms of drugs. In addition to fake IDs, requests, etc. So all, everything uh, except for child porn. That was the only thing that was, oh, this is bad, we're going to ban this, right? Silk Road operated for three years. Their profits were three and a half to four billion dollars. Those are the profits of Silk Road itself. They money laundered more, so it was very lucrative business. The FBI was finally, be able, was finally able to take it down. But that was the initial surge, right? That's, that was the initial... Um, cause for the prices to go up for Bitcoin, but that was not the only use. There were people in Brazil who were suffering from a lot of inflation. So they result, they, they result to converting their currencies into Bitcoin just to be able to have their money saved because of the hyperinflation they were suffering from, which is also now happening in Venezuela, in addition to the recent incident at uh, Greece. Right? So the use cases were, a lot of them were valid. But the thing that caused the surge was initially drug markets, okay? Then we have the very confusing topic, mining. It's often when people talk about Bitcoin, they talk about mining. So in very simple terms, mining is transaction verification. So imagine with me a Islamic wedding. So you have the... Uh, the man, the woman, and then there's the sheikh who is going to wed them, right? So the transaction is the marriage. And then you have the sheikh as the person who is validating the transaction. So he takes the civil ID of each side, 
right? And then he verifies that, yeah, these are the people who are going to get married, and then he logs it into his ledger, which is the blockchain in our case. So this is the mining process, in very simple terms. Um, why is it called mining? There are no Bitcoins that exist initially. So to create Bitcoins, somebody has to do a transaction. Okay? And then the miner who solves a mathematical equation that is the verification component gets rewarded with Bitcoins. The algorithm starts with 50 Bitcoins as a reward. And then it, with time, it, it goes down. The current reward is 12 and a half coins. And that's it. That is mining in very simple terms, right? So Bitcoin is a, all the cryptocurrencies are deflation based. If you're familiar, if you're unfamiliar with financial terms, deflation means there's a fixed number of coins. So Bitcoin has 21 million that will ever exist. Okay. So the, the price is always increasing. It is not decreasing. Um, I'll give you another example. Kuwaiti dinar is issued by the central bank. This is a fiat currency. So all our worldwide currencies are called fiat. And the bank is at will to issue and print currencies at any time. There's no cap. USA lifted off the uh, uh, link between the USD and the gold. So now they just print money based on trust. Yeah, we're going to just print $500 million. Nobody's going to care. Right? With Bitcoin, it is different. There are 21 million that will ever be mined. So people have to keep doing transactions for Bitcoins to keep coming up. If nobody does transactions, there will be no more Bitcoins. And uh, as long as, if, you, if we hit the 21 million and we mine all the coins, what happens to the price of the Bitcoin? Does it mean that one, one Bitcoin could reach 1 million? Maybe. I don't think so, but maybe. But then you will not do a transaction of one Bitcoin. You will send 0 0.00000001. So that will be a fraction of a Bitcoin. You can do up to eight decimal points at the time being. It is possible to change it in the future to more decimal points if that is required. So that is the ecosystem. Question for the mining process. No. no we'll take questions and answers at the end. I just want to brush over these things, right? Then we'll cover the Q&A at the end, just to have time to cover all the topics for people who are here for the uh, setup, yeah? So just a quick graph. A blockchain consists of blocks. Like a box, you put transactions into it. You are the miner who is doing the verification, okay? So you choose which transactions do I want to verify? Why do you want to choose? Because on top of the 50 Bitcoins or the reward, whichever you're going to get, you also get fees per transaction. So whoever is paying more fees to get his transaction processed faster, okay, uh, is going to be favored by the miners. So the miner picks which transactions they want. They fill in their box. Then they start the verification process. Then they link their current box to the previous box. That's why it's called the block chain. We chain all the blocks to each other, okay? And then at the end, they solve a mathematical uh, equation just to prove that they actually did something. And then it gets logged into the ledger. That's the process. Now, why, is, why are the, all these blocks linked to each other? Because we want to stop any tamper of transactions. We want to make sure that any transaction that has happened before can never be tampered or altered. Nobody can double spend. If I give money to Ahmed here, okay, he cannot go back in time and say that Majid never gave me money. Uh, look, there's no history, right? So this is a tamper-proof system. Let's talk about the differences between the Bitcoins or the cryptocurrencies. Um, some of them are designed for financial freedom. So... Financial freedom means you are not linked to a bank. You can take your money out. You have complete uh, control of your money. An example of that is Bitcoin and Litecoin. Uh, Parity, which is Dogecoin. Financial asset transfer system 
This is a company called Ripple. It's a privately owned coin, but they allow banks to talk to each other, to transfer money instantly. Currently, they're using Swift from a company called Swift. And for me to do a transaction on, let's say, Sunday, I receive the money three days, four days after. This is very inconvenient in our digital age, right? So Ripple allows me to transfer money between banks in a few seconds. And American Express has signed an agreement with Ripple just a few weeks ago to allow transfers between uh, USA and UK for the time being. It's already rolled out in uh, Europe. It's rolled out in USA. Uh, India, the largest bank and the largest remittance company in India is already live with Ripple. Uh, Japanese and Korean banks are also testing Ripple to go live in Q1. Uh, platform for programmable financial applications. Th this is Ethereum, if you've heard of Ethereum. They have taken the blockchain from Bitcoin and they made it as a platform where you can write your own applications and run them on top of this blockchain. So this allows people to write applications to talk to each other, send messages, send uh, financial transfers, etc. Uh, settle uh, contracts, something called smart contracts. So you can write conditions that if uh, my power bill, my electricity bill has reached this amount, then I would send the equivalent of USD or Ether, whatever it is, to the company automatically. So you don't have to do this a manual process. Anonymity, this is what people thought that Bitcoin was initially designed for, but Bitcoin was not designed for anonymity. Yes, you have an address that is not linked to your name directly, but at the end you are going to register with an exchange like Bitstamp, like um, CEX, like Bitfinex, and Kraken, and many others, where you just simply like, wherever you want to buy uh, currencies, you go to an exchange and you buy them. So the exchange has all your information, and all the transactions are logged publicly onto the ledger. So you can't avoid having the transaction exposed. Um, even when there was something called tumblers, so basically... It was a big hosting service. You will send your Bitcoins to an address that they own. They will mix it with other people's coins, and then they will take it out to another address. This was also not really anonymous. A lot of people were exposed. So um, two coins that are designed from scratch for anonymity are Zcash and uh, Monero. Okay, I have some question marks on Monero. So Zcash is the only one I would trust for anonymous transactions. That's why these two are now booming in the drug, in the, in the drug markets. Yeah, Zcash and Monero, yes. Okay. I wouldn't recommend using Monero. So stick with Zcash because Zcash allows you, these two allow you to create private transactions that are not logged onto the ledger. That's how they achieve anonymity. And the creator of Zcash is actually a professor in uh, Washington University, Matthew D. Green. He's a, a very brilliant person. I've been following him on Twitter long before he created Zcash. And then we have distributed data access. That's a use case. I'll give you an example. Is see a coin, file coin, and store J. What they do is that um, if you have used the backup a service like iCloud or CrashPlan or whatever it is, you are putting all your files into a single company, right? And that company controls all your files and how or where or when you can access them. CrashPlan canceled all the user and packages a few months ago. So they became corporate only. So now you as a user have lost your investment. You have to, you have to take down all the backups that you have and then upload them somewhere else, which is very inconvenient. And then you have to also go through the process of finding something suitable. What these solutions here are doing is that you will have a storage capacity that you can rent, you pay for, and it is distributed. Now remember in the blockchain diagram that I have shown you, distributed means there's no single point of failure. So the data is scattered across multiple systems. It is encrypted so that nobody can access it except you, right? So that's a nice feature about it. Um, 
I have used Sia Coin personally. It's a very nice project. Real world use cases, I think I've just mentioned most of them now. Right, so currency management tracking and transparency, that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, etc. Litecoin was created by an ex-Google engineer. Um, asset management and real estate, these are two links. So I'll post, if you follow me on Twitter, I'll show you the, uh, my handle at the beginning of the, uh, um, at the end of the presentation. Um, or if you've registered with Serdab Lab, they will also share it with you. So these are links to news articles where Dubai wants to use blockchain technologies for real estate management. They want to make sure that when a transaction has occurred, it is logged in real time, that this real estate belongs to this person. They don't want to wait for the real estate agents to go and register them at courts or wherever, wherever they should be. Smart contract for auto payments. A German company called RWE is the largest uh, energy and gas provider in Germany. They have signed an agreement with Ethereum to do auto payment for their um, electronic vehicles, wherever you charge your cars. So you can actually process the transactions using the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, decentralized file storage, as I mentioned, Sia Coin, StarJ, and Filecoin. Um, there are many other use cases, but those are the ones that I'm familiar with. There's a lot of coins in the market. I stopped caring, and I really don't read about them anymore. There are more than 2,000 coins, and there are more coming out um, every day. So, for the coins themselves, you can do transfers. Transferring through Bitcoin currently is not uh, financially making sense because a single transaction could cost you a lot in terms of the fees. To send one Bitcoin, it could cost you maybe $100. Doesn't make sense to pay $100 to send $10,000, right? Um, that's why I would suggest using Litecoin instead. The cost is very low and it processes very fast. Ripple is also uh, possible. Automated payments, that's where Ethereum kicks in. To have full control of your money, you have Litecoin, you have uh, Zcash, you have Monero. Uh, for trading, everything, really. I mean, the market is very lucrative. You can easily make, in two weeks, 20% minimum. Um, I did some trading in the past three months, and any trade I made, I made sure it was a 20% minimum profit. I made three or four transactions. I made 25%, 30%, 20%, 40%. 40%. So that's money you can't get with banks or any other investment uh, hedge fund or whatever it is. And then you have file storage facilities. So legality and regulations. Unfortunately, our local market or in the region here, they're very negative and they always look at the negative titles or uses of things just so that they become a clickbait kind of news posts. Right? Um, I will name it specifically. al Qabas posted a week ago an article stating that the Central Bank of Kuwait has banned Bitcoin. That was the title. And if you read the article itself, there is nothing in that article that has a proof or anything that says that the central bank actually banned it. The central bank has no stance on whether it's legal or not, in a way. So they did not, they did not come out publicly and say this is legal, this is not. But from a business point of view, you have companies in Kuwait operating, selling uh, Bitcoin fully legally with the blessing of the central bank. And I know the guys personally. So Bitfils is one of them. Yalla Bit is coming up. Okay, so whatever you read negative news here, you should not believe it. Always look for sources. Most of these articles are posted with no sources. Another article that also has no sources was that 12,000 Kuwaitis are trading. Where is the source of that information? Where did you find these 12,000 Kuwaitis? I want to see them. I mean, uh, seriously, man. Okay, so... Um, some companies use them as currencies, consider them, consider cryptocurrencies as actual currencies. Uh, currently, only Bitcoin globally is acknowledged. So Ethereum and everything else is not yet fully legally acknowledged, okay, or being used. But I think within 2018, we should have at least five more cryptocurrencies roll into uh, the global market 
as as government level approved kind of uh, currency. And the U.S. they consider them as securities or commodities. So they don't consider them as as a currency, they consider them as a commodity, something you own, like gold or whatever it is, or silver. Okay. Um, companies that, uh, sorry, countries that consider um, Bitcoin specifically legal: U.S., Sweden, Switzerland, Japan, Korea, South Korea, obviously, um, Finland, Iceland, and many more. Uh, Saudi Arabia has no ban, so they're okay with. Uh, Bitcoin, UAE is okay with it, Kuwait is okay with it. I did not hear from anybody in Oman or Bahrain yet, or Qatar. Uh, anonymity, honestly, if you need to be anonymous, you buy Bitcoins, you buy Ethers, you buy Ripples, whatever you like. You exchange them for Zcash, then you can do whatever you like. Uh, in my in my opinion, using any cryptocurrency should be considered as cash. When I give cash to somebody, it's a transaction between me and him. Nobody else needs to know. Okay, but if you are exceeding a specific amount, let's say for example, 100,000 KD. Okay, this is the legal bound in Kuwait that any transaction of 100,000 KD or more needs to be done through a bank. It cannot be hand to hand. And also if you want to do a deposit at a bank now of 10,000 KD or more, they will ask you about the source and you'll have to fill in a form. Anti-money laundry laws, I have registered with a exchange called uh, Bitstamp. They are, in my opinion, the best exchange in Europe or globally. The reason is that they are audited by one of the big um, four auditor companies in the world. And they have very strict anti-money laundry laws, AML laws. And the reason is that they ask you for proof of residency. So they, they ask for a scan of your passport, uh, a scan of your, uh, or your bank account information. Where did you get this money from? You're investing. You can't just dump 1 million KD and say, I have this. Or I found it in my mother's cabinet. That's not going to fly with them, right? You have to show the source and history of that money, where it's coming from. I use, I use Bitstamp uh, mainly for the financial cashing out and cashing in. I use other... Um, Exchanges to reach altcoins because Bitstamp doesn't have everything. It has a limited set, but I use other exchanges like Bitrex. I stopped using Kraken because their platform is very slow. It is very unsuitable for trading. Uh, business laws. Switzerland was very fast in adopting cryptocurrencies. They adopted them into their existing laws. In fact, most of the reputable uh, initial coin offerings just like where you have in our organizations, we have uh, initial uh, uh, public offering, an IPO, where a company registers itself onto a, a stock exchange. We have initial coin offering, where a coin registers itself. Switzerland adopted these, and they have a lot of regulations on how to do things properly. So anybody who wants to do a proper ICO, they usually go to Switzerland and register with a uh, well-known agent to handle the ICO process for them so that they are fully legal and uh, compliant. <coughs> Tips. Avoid and ignore FUD. FUD starts for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, Wall Street bankers are very famous for this kind of tactic. Bitcoin is fraud. JP Morgan is very famous for his uh, last words. Uh, anybody who deals with Bitcoin is a fraud. I'm going to fire anybody who is dealing with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin should be uh, regulated or cancelled. And then a few weeks later, we find out they're actually investing in Bitcoin. Okay? Yeah. No, actually, that was their investors, not JP Morgan itself. But a week after that, we found out they were actually investing. Right. So... You will find a lot of people who are scaring you out of that, including my own family and co-workers. I asked a co-worker who was wise at the time, and he said, and I was asking him because he has been working for quite some time, and uh, I wanted to know how he is managing his investments. He is British, and I wanted to know how they handle things um, over there, especially that he's working here, so he's obviously putting his money into something. And he said, avoid this crap. Nobody's going to buy this. It's going to crash. It's going to be deleted from the internet. But why would you put your money into that? Alhamdulillah, I don't listen unless I have a valid uh, reason. 
and he did not have a good one. Uh, my mother also told me, these guys are going to rip you off. Don't buy from them. Alhamdulillah, I did not listen. And I continued investing. So avoid FUD. If nobody gives you a, a solid reason, don't believe them. Okay? Bad negative press. Al-Qabas was an example. Uh, I have seen a few interviews in Kuwait on TV or in the newspapers. The guys who talk either don't know what they're saying or they put a lot of technical jargon that they lose everybody. Okay? So, you will find them also talking about drug markets, etc. It should be avoided, should be cancelled, nobody should be talking about it. Again, look at the bright side. Dell is accepting bitcoins. I can buy a laptop from Dell using bitcoins. You can buy from Amazon, actually they're going to accept it I think within a few months. Microsoft was offering bitcoins, I don't know if they cancelled it now or not. So there are real businesses, Fortune 500 companies accepting bitcoin. You can buy a Lamborghini actually. And that's the joke within the community that, oh Lambos. So, and actually Lamborghini posted on their Twitter account, we are out of Lambos. So <laughs> a lot of people made a lot of money and they bought a lot of cars. So they are actually accepting that. Read and understand. I really encourage you to avoid watching videos and video tutorials. Read articles. Because in articles you will understand um, how things are changing. A video could take once, a video could be posted once every three weeks. Three weeks in the cryptocurrency market is very, very, very a long time. You will be losing a lot of information if you don't keep up. This is if you want to keep up, okay? So make sure you always read and you understand. And if you don't understand, ask the community. What does it mean? Um, unfortunately, the Bitcoin core, which is the original Bitcoin team, they applied very heavy censorship onto the forums, on Reddit, on bitcointalk.org, etc. So whenever they were trying to push some of their own changes and the community was um, fighting back, they would delete all these posts. So people find ways to post about it here and there. So also don't believe everything you see. Look for the other side. Search for something FUD, something scam. Uh, why is it not going to work? Look for the other side of the um, equation. Uh, having prototypes are a big plus. If you are going to invest into an ICO, if the ICO has a prototype working, this is a very big plus. A lot of them don't. It's just a promise. We're going to build X and Y. Please give us millions. That's how they operate. And I don't invest. I have personally not invested in any ICO. Okay. Uh, trade safely. A lot of people will tell you that you will make a lot of money if you do margin trading, which is basically you are borrowing from the exchange that if you make a profit, I want 10 times more, 50 times more, 100 times more. But if you lose, you lose as much. You lose 100 times more. Uh, from a religious point of view, this is not uh, sound. You should not be doing margin trading. If you don't care, this is up to you. But at least understand what people are telling you to do. So if you are taking financial advice from somebody, make sure you understand what each button you are clicking is doing. Okay? Pump and dump. This is unfortunately a, uh, uh, the waters are filled with sharks. Pump and dump means a bunch of guys start advertising a group, mostly on Telegram, that you should join us. We are going to uh, drive the prices up so you can make a lot of profit. And it happens that the price, let's say, starts at $1 and they sell at $3. But who sells? the group creator and a few of his buddies, once the price goes up, they start selling off before they tell all the people who are following them. So then the price crashes. And the money that is coming to them is from all the people who have been buying all this time and also selling at a panic when they start loading off. So you should definitely avoid pump and dump groups. Okay? HODL, H-O-D-L, is a joke within the community as well. It's a typo. Somebody typed... Uh, mistakenly hold into huddle so that means buy coins and keep them so again people are not treating coins as a transaction facility they're treating them as a commodity it's something that you hoard you keep holding it until the price inflates and then you sell them off I'm not encouraging holding and I'm not discouraging it I'm just saying these are the terms it is up to you to choose what to hold and what not Personally, I'm holding Sia coin. Uh, the project seems promising, so that's my personal view. I'm holding Sia coin for now. 
SIA, S-I-A, SIA coin. Okay? Politics, everything has politics, unfortunately. So this is unavoidable. Uh, the Bitcoin core group is very well known for their censorship and heavy politics. Uh, the Chinese market, who are creating the miners, the advanced miners, are also heavy with politics. And all these forks that you have seen recently or heard of, like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, etc., these were all caused mostly by the Chinese market having conflict with the Bitcoin core teams. So there are always politics involved. That's why I encourage you again to read and understand why things are happening. Should you keep your money into something or should you take it out? Where is the safe exit? You know, all these things. It helps you with the decision making process. Buying and selling in Kuwait. Um, most of you probably already know Bitfills. This is already operational. You can only buy from them. Their profit margin is quite high, honestly. It's like, I think, 12%. But if you want something fast, this is the only option. They accept only Knet. Yellowbit is coming up soon. I think within, within a month, they'll be operational. Less than a month. Okay. So in less than a month, they'll be operational. You can go in and register your email address. They will contact you. Both of these are Kuwaiti businesses. They are fully legal, and they are operating with the blessing of the central bank. Okay? These are not scams. And I know th the owners of these two personally. Yellowbit will sell you Bitcoins. And you can also sell Bitcoin. So whatever you bought, you can sell back into the local market or to, onto their platform. And you can cash out to your bank account. So this is something that we did not have before in Kuwait. Okay. Um, initially, a few in addition to Bitcoin, but I think they will expand even more. So not only Bitcoin. Okay. The Bitfills only sells Bitcoins. Yes. No. I mean, you can buy, but you can't cash out. You will need an exchange. So an exchange example is bitstamp.net and bitoasis.net. Bitoasis is UAE-based. It's the first exchange in, in the GTC region. However, from the community group that I have joined uh, in the past, uh, I think, what has it been, five months or four months, um, the, the group is for the MENA region. And from the discussion with the guys, they're saying that withdrawals from BitOasis take a lot of time, which is two to three weeks. That's why most of them resort to having credit cards and withdraw from credit cards, which is something I also discourage you from doing. Because you are losing at least 3% of your profits, of your money to credit card companies. And if there's anything I hate more than Wall Street, it is the credit card business that is either Wall Street oriented or not. Uh, with Bitstamp, you can withdraw directly to your bank account. You will pay, I think, 5 or $15 on the transaction and 0.09%, which is very reasonable. Okay? Sorry? Um, deposits take one to two working days. Withdrawals take one to three working days. And I have deposited more than six times and withdrawn more than six times. So I'll take, I'll take questions at the end, please, okay? So this is the Telegram community created by uh, Talal Yasin. It's a cryptocurrency mina, right? Uh, he is the also, Talal is also the founder, co-founder of um, Yallabit, okay? You can scan this code or click on this link to join the group if you like. Um, the group talks about everything, okay? They discuss some trades, they help some people do mining, we discuss the ecosystem, the business, new stuff coming out, uh, booming business, so it's a very healthy discussion. Uh, the group gets very chatty at some times, so you can also mute that and just browse whenever you're bored or free, okay? Okay. Questions and answers. You ask the first question, please. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me give you the mic. They, we want to record all the Q&A as part of the audio, please. Okay, I, I have a couple of questions. I'm going to throw a couple of curveballs at sure, you. Sure. Do your best. Sure. So, what you've talked about some of the biggest currencies. You mentioned Bitcoin. You mentioned Ripple. Can you just 
give a short explanation to them what is the USP of each of them, how do they differ, and where do you see Bitcoin in long term? Because they had an advantage as a leader first to market, but as you explained, there are other currencies that are coming up that are showing actual use cases, you know? So. Okay, so in terms of use, I mentioned these in the initial slides, yeah. where Bitcoin is used, Ripple is used, Ethereum is used. Those are already there that I've explained. In terms of long-term use cases for, or long-term visibility for Bitcoin, um, honestly, I don't think there is a long-term view for Bitcoin. That's my personal view only. <clears throat> the reason is that there's a lot of developer tension, right? A lot of the community are having tension. They are forking out. Forking is a programming um, terminology. It means you're going in one road, that is the application code, okay? And then you start having a fork or different ways. So people take the original code, change it into something new. That's where we have Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold. Everything came from Bitcoin Core, and then they started changing them. And the reason I say that Bitcoin doesn't have a long-term visibility is that Ethereum is taking over very fast. The platform is quite um, flexible, okay? It does not suffer from transaction uh, bottlenecks. Now, if you want to do a transaction on Bitcoin, and you want to transfer from one address to another address, it could easily take three hours, eight hours. This is unacceptable into the cryptocurrency ecosystem, unacceptable at all. It shouldn't take more than 10 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Okay? And the fees involved are extremely high. And this is also unacceptable. If you are dealing with Bitstamp, Bitstamp pays your fees. But if you are having your own address or your own wallet, and you are doing the transfer, you are paying those fees yourself. Right? Any more questions? Yes. Um, what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, some exchanges pay the transfer fees on your behalf. You don't pay anything. Some of them, not all of them. You have to go to each exchange and check their fee schedule. They have a table with all the fees involved. How much you are going to pay for uh, cryptocurrency um, transfers and how much you will pay for cash transfers. Okay? He has a few questions. I'll get back. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Ripple as well yes. as a form where the banks are also interested in getting yes. invested in. We know that behind the scenes there are big players that are getting ready to get involved as well. At the same time, my question is then for Ripple, for example, they're actually more interested in the technology itself and the blockchain technology. The, it means that they're not necessarily then investing in the coin. Is that correct? Yes. So uh, Ripple does not have 21 million coins. Ripple has billions of coins. Yes. Okay. And they, are, they did not issue all the coins at once. The Ripple company holds 60% of the coins, if I'm not mistaken. And they release them on a monthly basis. They release more into the ecosystem. The reason they're doing that is that they don't want people to treat Ripple as a holding coin, where it's a commodity and you just keep saving it. They want people to use the coin as only a transfer method that I will convert from KD to uh, USD, just transfer the money, and then cash out immediately, right? So Ripple took the blockchain and created a trusted platform of a decentralized system. So you have central hubs somewhere, which are the banks, okay? And not all the banks are considered trusted nodes. So Ripple itself selects a few uh, systems, few organizations that are considered trusted, okay, and these become the gateways. So let's say, for example, a bank in Kuwait wants to transfer on Ripples. They will not be considered trusted, but they can deal and transfer um, the coins. Once they become trusted, they will have a complete copy of the ledger, of the blockchain. So that means more redundancy across the world. So let's say, for example, the internet gets cut off in the U.S., Okay, that will not stop Ripple. All transactions globally continue to work between Asia, Middle East, Europe, etc. Okay? I'd like to add something to what you said. Um, so, Ripple... So, please don't confuse Ripple with Bitcoin. So, Ripple is a privately owned blockchain. That means nobody can just jump on it just because they want to jump on it. Block uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum is a publicly owned blockchain. That means the people control it. With Ripple, it's a company. 
it's, it's controlled by a company. So that means if they decide to issue more coins, it's up to them to issue more coins. So Ripple is acting as a company in the blockchain technology field where um, Bitcoin and Ethereum and other coins are acting as um, a company of people. Everybody has a say in it. This is what differs between Ripple and, and Bitcoin and Ethereum. Just a question for everyone. Um, I'm very interested in the community. So how many people actually own cryptocurrencies here and how many people use it? How many people use, spend money with cryptocurrency? Obviously. <laughs> okay. How, how big do you think the cryptocurrency community is? I know a yes. few faces yeah. that are not here today, but through previous events in Serdab Lab, there's a big mining community in Kuwait because the power is cheap. Okay, and I know guys who have rented warehouses and basements and have been mining for the past four or five years. So the community is much larger than what you think here. And this is only in Dab Lab. You should explore, <coughs> sorry, you should explore the GCC. In the cryptocurrency uh, telegram group itself, we have, I think, 253 members. And these are only people who are familiar with Telegram and who wants to be involved. There are a lot more. I think the community is in the thousands. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, let me, let me, let me get the... Ah, Gablik. Uh, uh, yeah. Can you pass the mic, please? Yeah, uh, you said it takes... Uh, uh, okay. uh, sorry, it's Liwarak. Liwarak, wait. Yeah, you go first. Yeah. Sean, yeah. Thank you. So, um, for the most of us that have never dealt in uh, cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. uh, I have a question about the two companies uh, here based in Kuwait. Uh, there's a difference between they have the blessings of the central bank or the central bank has not said anything to them. And if they're, uh, I don't know what kind of uh, setup they are, if they're an investment company, uh, maybe they are working with cryptocurrencies. They have not said anything to central bank, and central bank has not said anything to them. So if you can uh, just clarify that point for us. Uh, I'm assuming that for someone who, who's never worked in uh, cryptocurrencies, that it would be a good idea to start by using some of these local companies. Is, is that something also uh, you recommend? Uh, where does one start, basically, the question? And uh, last but not least, um, can you just explain to us a little bit more about the blockchain? You know, we, we need to understand a little bit, what is the blockchain, Yanni? How, um, how does it work? Is, is a cryptocurrency part of the blockchain, or is, is each cryptocurrency a blockchain? It's a little bit uh, unclear to us. Thank you. Not each coin or cryptocurrency requires a blockchain. Some of the newly released ones are operating on top of Ethereum. So there's no necessity that a single blockchain is required for every single coin. They can share one coin, if, well, they can share one blockchain if they like. It's a ledger at the end. Okay, they just have to have a mechanism to differentiate between the coins you are sending. That's it. As for investments, I will not comment on investments companies in Kuwait. I don't know any of them. But I will tell you to follow the same... Um, the same methodology of choosing an investment company, the same way you choose a real estate agent in Kuwait. Do you trust them? Do you think they're gonna rip you off? Most real estates are gonna, right? So if you, if you wanna buy a house in, let's say, Turkey, you can go there and buy it for yourself and save yourself maybe 10,000 KD. I don't know what fees they are taking from the investment companies in Kuwait, but it does not take much. If you go and register with an exchange directly, you wire the money directly from your bank to the exchange and you buy, that's it. But if you want someone to act as a hedge fund, to manage your portfolio, to manage your investments, to do the trading on your behalf, that's a different story. I don't know a specific company that does that. Maybe there is, maybe there is not. Uh, again, you'll have to look at their reputation. Okay. So, sorry, so what would be the exchange you want to go to directly for uh, The one I mentioned is Bitstamp. Bit Oasis is in the UAE, you can buy, but they also have, because of the local banks, they have some restriction on how much money you can withdraw per week or per month. So I think their limit is 2,000 dirhams per week, which is very paltry for, picking, for people making a lot of big trades. So Bitstamp makes a lot of sense. 
Why? It doesn't make sense. Why? Again, escalate, wait for support, uh, wait for the bank's mercy to give you your own money. Why? The same, same. If you withdraw USD or euros from Bitstamp, your local bank is gonna exchange it. If you withdraw dirhams from BitOasis, your local bank is gonna convert it to Kuwaiti dinar. So the local bank is gonna have his share anyway, right? So you might as well take a pick a platform that's gonna give your your money as fast as possible. Uh, sorry, he was asking a question. We can pay them directly through bank transfer. Yes, yes. So we can do it. I don't know. I'm not being too big time because I have been dealing on this way through. Yes. And they don't accept the transaction if I transfer it through a local other exchange. The mode of payment, they accept it only through the current bank account itself or credit card. I'm not sure what you mean, but Bitstamp, they give you their IBAN their account number and all the corporate information, you add it to your bank account as a beneficiary. You can buy through, no, you can buy through uh, through your bank account, you can transfer. You can use your credit card, but there's a limit uh, per day and per uh, per week. I think it's uh, 5,000 per day and $20,000 per month, not per week. So that's also limiting for people who want to go in big chunks. And also they have a big percentage. I think they take 5%. So, yes, if you use credit card. So that's why I discourage you from using credit cards whenever you don't have to. Yes, that's the safest option. First of all, thank you so much. You made one, my one million questions into just two. Okay, so you talked about fear. Now, as the banking industry, do you think it's going to get disrupted within the next five to ten years? Will the cryptocurrency actually destroy banks as we're hearing, as we're listening? Uh, will this come for a reality? Given the fact that Triple is actually working with banks, not against banks like the other cryptocurrencies. Now Ripple has 150 banks signed on. So do you think the banking industry will really get disrupted by these currencies? That's one. Two. Uh, what do you personally recommend, if it's possible, I mean, if, if you would like to share, uh, what is the best to invest in right now? And that's it. Thank you. In terms of uh, banking sector being disrupted and removed, that's never going to happen. Simply because the banks are governed by the government through a lot of regulations. The banks are more than 100 years old. You cannot just simply remove them. Okay. Cryptocurrencies exist for certain reasons. Uh, Greece, Venezuela, Brazil, Zimbabwe, they are suffering from hyperinflation because their governments failed. People use cryptocurrencies to save their money, whatever they can save. They can use it for trading to make money, okay? And at least to preserve their wealth, okay? So there are use cases for certain things, but you can never get, of, you can never get rid of banks. And you shouldn't. Honestly, any. You need a safe place where you want to keep your fiat money for the time being. Uh, I think most of the countries are moving out of cash into a digital uh, currency uh, push. I don't like that personally, but at the end, the banks are going to exist. And the fact that the banks are being pushed, any big industry never is never proactive, they're always reactive. Only when somebody shakes the throne, then they start to move. Whether, whether it's the healthcare industry, the banking sector, whatever other sector is there. So Stripe, if you know the company called Stripe, I think the founders are uh, Irish, two Irish uh, brothers. They started it and they disrupted the US Euro market. Okay, but again, those are still restricted there because of the legalities of the banking sector. They cannot expand. What Ripple is trying to do is make transactions very fast between banks for you and me, right? So that could be considered in a way as a rival to Stripe, in a way, okay? So the use cases are there. You cannot get rid of them. You shouldn't get rid of them. Yeah. Oh, the inv where to invest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I have my money into Ripple, into 
uh, Sia coin and IOTA, ADA, and a few more things. So, yeah, but these are not long term holds. Okay, if you want to trade, yes, uh, the market is very lucrative. If you know how to trade, or at least if you go to coinmarketcap.com, okay, you will see the market value of the coins. Bitcoin resembles $180 billion with the current price of $11,000, $11,500, okay? So $180 billion were poured into Bitcoin. All the other currencies represent $170, $150 billion, okay? Before you put your money into an investment, an ICO or a coin that is already existing, make sure you read about it. What is the goal of that project? Even though you could trade on something that is extremely unreliable and make 50% or 100%, they could disappear immediately the next day because that could be a scam project. Okay? So just for your financial safety, make sure that this project is solid. Uh, yes. Okay? Uh, usually there are white papers. So it's like a two to five page explaining what this project is. It should have some sense into it. If you read something and it feels like a management presentation, it's most likely a scam. Because they're not showing any value or any actual implementation of what they're trying to do. They're just trying to sell off to some guy with money and that's it. Uh, first, I, I, I wanna thank you because um, as you can see, I don't have any hair. Um, and I swear the research into the blockchain has made me lose any hair that would potential come back. Um, <laughs> and I'm being serious. Um, so a couple questions, please. Uh, you mentioned five coins that you think next year uh, governments might uh, use. Um, so that's one question. Second question is cell phone protection. Um, uh, I've been reading that that might be an issue in terms of hackers getting into phone and copying your phone or whatever the technical term is. Uh, l l second to last question, uh, local Bitcoin versus Bitfix, which one do you recommend in terms of, I think that's the site, local Bit, where you can just find people who are yeah, selling, yeah, yeah. Which, which do you recommend? Um, and lastly, as this a poor American with an American passport. I know what you mean. Every, every, every exchange wants a validation, a verification of account, but they don't allow a U.S. passport. So what can I do? Is it just going to Bitfix, buying them here, and then get into Bitstamp so I can use other currencies? Is that what you would suggest? And thank you again. As a U.S. citizen, I, uh, I, have, I have chatted with a few. I've chatted with a few on the group. Uh, I don't think Bitstamp has an issue. But as a proof of residence, all you have to do is go to your bank, okay? Ask them for a <coughs> bank statement with your address printed on top. That's it. That's all they want. I have seen guys who use credit cards to withdraw money simply because they don't want to go through the verification process. You have to understand this verification process is to guarantee that your money is clean. Your bank cannot deny that money, okay, when it comes through a regulated exchange. If you're dealing with a shady exchange, okay, you're going to draw questions to you. So the banks in Kuwait might refuse your transactions, okay? So if you're trying to run around credit cards, whatever it is, and then you're, you're showing yourself as a shady person who is doing something shady, uh, drugs, whatever it is, smuggling money, don't do that. Go the legal way. Yes, sometimes they take some, their time to do the, do the verification, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it is, you can do the trading mean, meanwhile, okay? Um, you cannot deposit initially until you do verification. Uh, I, I apologize. Uh, what I mean is, for example, like Coinbase and Gemini, that have an account with them, you need like a driver's license or some form of identification, and they won't yeah. allow a U.S. passport. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess what I'm asking is, how do I get around that? Because Bitstamp, you need coins in order to trade on it. You can't use 
You can. I transfer from Kuwaiti dinar into USD, and then I buy Bitcoins or Ethereum or Ripple. Right? So that is very easily handled. And don't use Coinbase. That's my advice to you. Okay. okay. Um, what other... Yeah. Um, do not use wallets on cell, on cell phones. That's my advice to you. Yes, because the attack surface is very easy on Android phones. On iPhone, it is much better in terms of security. But again, your phone is an easily attackable device. Not a single app? No. I, I wouldn't recommend. Okay? Yes. Physically and remotely. Okay? Depending on the platform. Now, what I would personally recommend is Ledger Wallet. There's a wallet called Ledger Wallet. Okay? The Nano S. They have something coming up called Blue, which has Bluetooth. Do not buy that. Bluetooth is not secure. Okay? There is a rival to Ledger Nano, which is called Trezor. Uh, Trezor claims to be secure, but they have had security vulnerabilities three times this year alone. It was not designed for security from the start. So my recommendation for ultimate security is a physical hardware wallet, okay, where you keep your coins in it. Not all the coins are supported. The majority are. All the new stuff are not yet supported, okay? But in those cases, you could keep them into an exchange. That's, I mean, alternatively, you have a machine at home that is disconnected from the internet whenever it's not used, okay? And then you download the wallet of that specific coin onto that machine and you synchronize with the network. That is my recommendation. At home, I use Linux. I don't use Windows. My file system is encrypted. I'm a very paranoid person. Alhamdulillah. Uh, throughout my years, I've never been hacked. No data stolen, no data lost. Okay, so be paranoid. It is very useful. Pick the right choices. Do not use mobile apps. If you're investing a lot, it's not worth the, the ease of access. Okay, and there's another thing. Uh, download a two-factor authentication application. So Google Authenticator, free OTP. Uh, on exchanges, they have an option called two-factor authentication. So when you log in, they will ask you for a username and password. Additionally, they will ask you for a random code that is changing every 30 seconds. This code could be safely, the application is on your phone. So anybody who has access to your username and password still cannot log in. They will also need access to your physical phone to get the specific code. Right? So this is very useful. You get five coins. If you take government, we're going to use these I said five because those are the top. If you go to coin market cap, you will see the top 10, top 5, whatever it is. I believe Ethereum, <coughs> Ethereum will be validated next year. Uh, by the way, the session has been over for a long time. You're free to stay for the Q&A, okay? Um, Ethereum. Ethereum is most likely going to happen, I think, by next year. Uh, through some politics, Russia has adopted Ethereum because the creator is also Russian. Um, so Russia will be the first country, obviously, to have Ethereum as a valid currency, or maybe they'll make their own. I think we will see with time. Uh, the other three I would recommend you go online and check. Ripple isn't most likely going to be used as a government-regulated currency because they don't want to use it as a currency. They want to use it as a transfer system only. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. <coughs> yeah. So, my question is, where's the real money? Uh, the trading or the mining? And what infrastructure required for the mining? Okay. The best uh, question, very straightforward. One question only, I like that. Okay, does it make sense to mine? In my opinion, no. Uh, because most of the currencies that are currently available, they require huge supply of hardware. Okay, whether it's um, hardware that is manufactured specifically for mining, like those for Bitcoin, or uh, graphics cards for other coins. Maybe if you mine, okay, you have like a warehouse, and you mine for two, three years, and with the coins you are accumulating, you never spend them. Hoping that the value of that coin will uh, triple, quadruple, whatever it is, then you cash out. So the question comes, um, does it make sense that you operate at loss for three, four years? Okay, and what guarantee do you have that this coin is going to boom in price? 
that's a risk that you have to take. Um, that's what I can tell you. I personally mined for a year when the hardware-specific machines came out. They're called ASICs. I mined for a year because those were very new. So I was making uh, any good money. I got my return on investment within a month and a half, and I mined for a whole year. And then I, g I gave away the boxes for free last year because they were useless. I was generating more than uh, less than half a dollar every month. That's not even worth the noise it's making or the heat it's generating at home. I'm, I'm surprised my mother let me run these in, in one of our spare rooms anyway. What about cloud mining? Cloud mining, again, you're going to pay. I did a calculation um, two days ago. Genesis mining is very well known. I, if you put money of $40,000, okay, after a year, after a year, you will make maybe four thousand to six thousand dollars. So you will recover your forty, and you will make four to six k dollars. Okay, is it really worth it? Paying forty k, put that into trading. Find someone who's trading for you. Let him take twenty percent. Okay, you will make a lot more. You could easily make two hundred thousand dollars a year with forty k start easily. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so as far as trading is concerned. Uh um, you said uh, to keep your coins on an external external wallet, but can you keep, actually keep your cash with the uh, exchange, like keep it on the exchange? Is that legit? And uh, for Bitcoin, you said it has no long-term projection. Do you like see it crashing or coming down? And Ethereum, do you see it going up, doing what Bitcoin kind of did once it's validated? On Bitstamp, I definitely, when the market is starting to drop or crash, I definitely cash out and keep the money into the exchange so that I can buy back again. Yeah. Okay, so again, it depends on the exchange. Uh, there was an exchange very well known for many, many years called BTCE. The moment I stepped onto their website, okay, it felt like something that came out of a baqala. Yeah. Seriously, it was horrible. The support, the user interface, the requirements, there was no verification of identity. Okay, maybe that's lucrative to many people who want to get get in very fast, but that puts a lot of question marks on the credibility of that exchange. And they were taken down, I think, last month because of money laundry uh, uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they were dealing with a lot of the drug lords and the uh, uh, weapon-making guys, the Russian mob in Greece. So, yeah. Yeah, so pick your uh, exchange properly. What was the other question? Uh, with, with Ethereum, do you see Ethereum kind of doing what Bitcoin did and like jumping up once it's validated? Okay. And okay. also Bitcoin, do you see, because you said it has no long-term projection. Yeah. So do you see it like, what, like going up further or eventually coming down? Okay, I don't trade. Yeah. I'm not a certified trader. Yeah. Okay, I do casual trading. I'm based on information I receive from people I trust. Uh, however, on December 14th, a company called CME is a company that creates the trading platform for almost everybody across the world, okay? They are going to add and launch and activate Bitcoin trading for everybody on December 14th. So imagine the big guys having a lot of cr a crap load of money, want to invest, they will not buy at 11K. So the price has to go down, okay? Maybe with initial flux, it might go up, maybe 15K, maybe 20K, who knows? But it has to go down. The, the prices that are there are not even logical. Not, not, not a single trader, I can challenge any single trader who's here, okay, to show me that the current prices make sense in any trading values, waves, whatever it is, nobody knows. I bought Bitcoins last August at $600, okay? And I was telling a coworker, you should invest, it's going to go up. My projection, my estimation for this year is that Bitcoin will hit $5,000. It's freaking 11 and a half. Seriously, it doesn't make sense. There is no actual value why this number is coming. Maybe because of the hype. A lot of people are jumping in, maybe. Okay, but it's, it's becoming too high to get in. And if you look at the order books of the exchanges, all the exchanges have their buy-sell orders online. Mm -hmm. So you can go and see. The numbers that are being sold are very few, like 0 0.5, 1 Bitcoin. 10 bitcoins, and then you see a guy selling 50 bitcoins, but buying again at 50, another 50. That's actually probably most likely the same guy. Uh, he sells high, he buys low, and he fools the people who want to get into bitcoins, so he's getting cheap money from anybody else. Yeah. 
So I wouldn't recommend that you get into Bitcoin at the time being. Ripple, um, I see Ripple booming. A lot of um, good development is coming. I don't like the creator of Ripple, of, uh, sorry, of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Not Ripple, of Ethereum. I don't like the creator of Ethereum. He did a lot of dumb mistakes. Uh, and he avoided a lot of good advices that caused a lot of problems for the Ethereum platform. But the adoption is quite big. I think it might go to a hundred uh, to one thousand dollars by next year. And isn't it under like currently? A it's for I think last I checked was for seventy. Sorry, it's Ethereum. Right. I uh, I think last I checked was for seventy. It might have already hit uh, five hundred. How much is Ethereum now? Uh, five Ethereum. Five Ethereum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So, so, and you were saying as far as trading is concerned, like when you have your money in the exchange, when you're saying cash out, you're saying just t take your money, turn your money into fiat currency and take it off. Yes, and, yes. Yeah. yeah, so before, if you, are, if you are anticipating a market crash, just sell off your bitcoins or whatever altcoin you have into USD or Euro, whatever you want, and then keep it into the exchange. If you want to withdraw your profits, then you do a bank transfer, right. okay? Ledger, where is that ledger? Yeah, I mean, distributed gold. Adel, you said it's dis distributed. Yeah. Where does it reside? The, uh, the blockchain? The, yes. Bitcoin's blockchain? blockchain? Yes. Uh, on my PC, on your PC, on a few servers, on a farm somewhere, on a server farm somewhere else. Any machine can become part of that system. That's why I said it's a distributed system, system that is fault tolerant. No single master node. Even if all of the systems around the world crashed and only my machine remained, then Bitcoin remains active and my machine serves all the world. That's the beauty of the design of a distributed system, regardless of whether it's a blockchain or something else. So now, if I buy a coin yeah. from Bitcoin or Ethereum or any one of those, yeah. my information will be on all of the machines, even okay. the one in your house? No. When you are buying, you are buying from an exchange or a person, right? When you do a transaction, which is when you transfer from one account to another account on the blockchain, so one Bitcoin address to another Bitcoin address, it is not fiat to Bitcoin, it is Bitcoin to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Bitcoin. That's the only case where the ledger uh, has your transaction. So it shows that you have transferred one Bitcoin from your address to my address. Right? But there's no name linked to it. There's only addresses. What is your address? I have to give you an address. When you download a wallet or you create a wallet, it gives you a list of addresses. Just like bank accounts. Oh, Consider an address as uh, similar to a bank account or an IBAN. But who is tracking it? The ledger. And where is that ledger? Everywhere. In your house? Everywhere. I used to run the blockchain uh, for Bitcoin on my machine, but because you're saving the entire blockchain, it's, it's eating up from my disk space. Uh, at the time I ditched it, it was 60 gigabytes. Now I think it is already beyond 500 gigabytes worth of data. That's not useful to you or me. Okay, that's useful to people who want to look at information of transactions, want to do analysis, want to trace transactions, link a few things together. Like if you go to blockchain.info, okay, you can put... Um, an address or a hash or something, whatever it is, then you can see the history of transactions against that specific address. So your personal information is only with an exchange. And if you bought um, Bitcoins locally, like Bitcoin local, okay, uh, Bitcoin local is just um, a website that is telling you Majid is selling Bitcoin in Kuwait. So you go meet up face to face, you hand out cash, you take Bitcoins transfers and you leave. Okay, in that case, he has to transfer from his wallet to your wallet. That's where there will be a transaction into the blockchain. But your name is not there. And your the blockchain and could be private in some houses. Uh, I can I'm answer this question. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm Talal Yassin. Nice to meet you. Um, so, um, think of the think of it like this: the blockchain resides on every machine that is operating the network. Now, who operates the network? The miners, 
and then people who are running full nodes. I'm getting a little bit technical, but just bear with me. Uh, full node is basically either, either ten secular site ads. Forget all the websites. Forget Bitstamp. Forget whoever. Forget just Intel. Hain, you're, you're actually uh, uh, saving your coins on your own. Think of it, um, do, do you see the, the, the mobile app that you download for a Bitcoin wallet? Forget that. Let's talk about the actual software of Bitcoin that you download. It gives you an address. This becomes your bank account. You are your own bank. Hello. When you're your own bank, you have an address. People can transfer stuff to me. And then I can choose to help the network by relaying transactions. Yani if you make a transaction, if another person makes a transaction, it goes through my software and then I relay it. This is what Majid was talking about, about being distributed. You have a lot of nodes running. You have a lot of miners running and they're all contributing to each other. Everybody's saving the same information and everybody's relaying the same information. That's how the network operates and verifies itself. Does this make sense or? <coughs> so if there's a transaction between me and you. Everybody will know it. Kill the nodes on the network will know about it. But your personal information are not clear. So now how my node. Yeah, and my node, Al-Khain, I have an address. Do, how do you know it's Talal Ziasi node? How do you I, don't how, know. my node knows your node. It's connected through the network. That's يعني it. أنا قلت له أنت النود. لا 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 لا. The, the network itself connects to each other. يعني أنا الحين when I run a Bitcoin wallet, it connects to other Bitcoin nodes. So it sends some type of broadcast to everybody. أيوه 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 exactly. And then everybody is connected as a node, as a miner, as other. يطول على ما تعرف. يطول because you have to download the whole blockchain if you want to run a node. You have to download the whole blockchain, then you have to be synchronized with everybody else, and then you keep broadcasting to each other. This is the technical. Alhain, we're getting too technical. This is maladai, I think. Killish, killish. it's the, the blockchain technology is very, 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 very technical. And that's it. <laughs> but you can download wallets. There are specific yes. wallets yeah. that are not full nodes. Yeah, inshallah, until you talk to me, until you talk to Bitcoin, until you get 500 gigs, I'm not going to Yeah. I must know where it came from. Yes, yes. It's so, the, the, the topic is very broad to be understood in one day. It's very, very, very broad. But so again, you again, your personal information are not linked to the transaction. The only thing in the transaction is this address is sending to that address that amount. That's it. For a small amount, in 100 is it advisable to download an app? Sorry? For a small amount, in 100 is it advisable to download an app wallet? I would recommend you keep it on a, uh, on a trusted exchange. Simply because if you want to move the money out of somewhere into your own address, you are paying transaction fees. And if you want to move it out again, you are again paying transaction fees. <laughs> right? So if, if the amount is small, keep it on the exchange. It's easier for you also to trade if you want to trade. But make sure that the, the exchange is trusted. Yeah? They, of course, yes, they charge fees for trading. Obviously, that's how they make money. But uh, the more you transact, the less the fees become. So um, the maximum fees on Bitstamp is 0.25%. So 0.25%, that's negligible out of your... Yeah, if you are trading and you are making less than 0.25%, you shouldn't be trading. Okay, so you, are, you should be making money easily. That's if you're transferring Bitcoin. Transferring. It has nothing to do with trading. Yeah, your trading should be real time. Yes, hold on. Where's the second mic? Ah, sorry. Uh, hello, Madin. I will thank you. Uh, my question is uh, how uh, many forks will uh, affect the Bitcoin price? They're called market makers. Yeah. Whoever has money can push the market. And this is not only Bitcoin, this is anything. Okay. So now four, four forks in one year. Sorry. We saw four forks in one year. Gold. Uh, ah, the cash. forks. Uh, forks. Anybody can. I can just create a fork now. I just call it uh, Bitcoin Kuwait, okay, or Bitcoin Oil, whatever you want to call it, Bitcoin Galaxy, and people will start. Uh, I mean, using it if they want to. Nobody is stopping you from doing it. That's why, because the code is open. Ripple has its code closed to itself because it's a company. Bitcoin and Ethereum are public and on community-based coins. So the source code and the code for the application is public. Anybody could take it and change it. Uh, there should not be any control over it. Let people fork it. But you should only trade with whatever you trust. Yeah? 
ترى صار له ساعة منو؟ صدق؟ اوكي. هاي ماجد. هاي جايز، ام شاب. في سؤال وايد حلو بدي اسالك اياه. And since you're a bitcoiner, I think you're gonna answer it well. When is the best time to start trading in cryptocurrency? Okay. And how much do you need? Look at the charts and ask them. No, I know. I need you to answer to them. Now, now there's a lot of uh, fear. I see a lot of fear and a lot of eyes. And then, in the 11,000, that's a lot of money. That's why I said, don't enter Bitcoin now. Yeah. That's 100%. That's financial advice money. Okay. Yeah. That's Which I'm against personal opinion. <laughs> I'm very against your okay. advice. Okay. Uh, again, look for a trader who will advise you. I am not a trader. Yeah. Look at charts. If the chart is scooting up, it's going up, rocketing. I don't think that it's makes sense to invest. Ali, I will not ad give a financial no, 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 advice. No. It's not about that. Um, Bitcoin, uh, s some people see it as like this crazy, uh, wild uh, technology, which a lot of people are trying to understand. Trust me, you will not understand it. Take it from a guy who's not technical. You will not understand what a blockchain is. Y and you will understand, but you won't get it. Yani, like technical people get it. No, 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 that, that's too much, that, that's too much, that's way too much. Okay, uh, Bitcoin gives you, for me, what I think, uh, sorry, not Bitcoin, let's say cryptocurrency, okay? Come on, Okay, it gives you two things, financial freedom, okay, and a way to make money. You have Litecoin. Well, huh? no. You have Litecoin. No, no. Uh, sorry. This is this is a good point, by the way. Financial freedom is the basis of this. Uh, this is why I joined in. You don't have to be the most. So, um, I know you. I understand you're not a trader. So this question might be slightly off. Um, so I've been trading short term and long term uh, for stocks, currencies. Um, so I'm familiar. Uh, guys, guys, can you have the side talks outside, please? I can't hear anything. So I was just saying. Uh, I've been doing short-term and long-term trading, so I'm familiar with currency, uh, forex, and you know short-term contracts. Um, however, for so I wanted to understand what are some of the indicators to look into for short-term cryptocurrency trading on a macro and a micro level. Um, I understand, you know, there's forks going on, and you know, um, as more and more organizations, institutions adapt uh, different cryptocurrencies, um, the values are going to change, but. There's no value actually attached to. So if I've got a five kitty note, there's an actual value attached to it. Uh, whereas for cryptocurrencies at the moment, it's 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 pretty much bonkers. You know, who, who put the value for gold? Obviously, banks and you know, no governments. It's supply and demand. Sure, right. Yeah. So that's what cryptocurrency is. It's yeah. supply and demand. <laughs> I invested into gold. I made that mistake uh, in 2014. Okay, I had some extra cash and I bought some gold unfortunately the price went up by 1 kd per gram and then a month after it crashed from 16 kd per gram to 10 kd per gram after that i learned that the us was paying off its debt that's why the price of gold was crashing nobody tells you that unless you know, you get pinched but the value of cryptocurrency is driven by supply and demand uh, bitcoin's current price doesn't make sense because the demand is very high Okay, uh, Ethereum is also being driven up. Most of the, uh, yesterday, <clears throat> I think today morning or yesterday I checked my portfolio and most of the stuff are up by at least 5%. Those are the top 20, if you look at the top 20 coins, they're up by at least 5%. Some of them were at 20%. Sure, so what are the indicators uh, do you think the people should look into, you know, on a macro or micro level? It's like, so you did say like the Russian government, you know, uh, is adapting. Uh, follow up so news. Uh, for example, um, Ripple spiked from 0.2 dollars to 0.27, okay, uh, for one day because they announced the agreement with American Express. So that slight jump was a nice 25% profit or 20% profit, whatever it is, okay. And a quick trade, you ca you get your money, you again buy at a lower price, and you're happy. But that means you are keeping an eye on news. Alternatively, you set some targets. Okay, and then if it hits, it hits. You don't miss out on anything. Certain exchanges will send you alerts. Uh, Bitstamp has SMS alerts. You can put the low and high um, rates. Okay. Thanks. Behind you.
the Sia coin, where can you buy Sia it? Sia coin is available on Bittrex. Is that so they, I, I think it's available on other things. Poloniex, okay. But most of these exchanges do not accept cash. So you have to buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, or Litecoin first at a, an exchange and then transfer to Bittrex and then you can buy whatever you want. Okay? Just regarding the cash, do you think uh, the way to introduce uh, Bitcoin ATM or any other? Go ahead. I travel to Japan every year and I have seen a, um, a currency shop with a Bitcoin ATM machine that you can buy Bitcoins and cash Bitcoins out of it. Whether this is going to happen or not in Kuwait, I don't know. And I don't think it makes a difference because, I mean, you can still wire transfer stuff. And the volatility of the price of Bitcoin might discourage people from getting into it. Yeah, and today you're buying at 11, you wake up tomorrow, it's uh, 5,000. 5, I remember in December 2013, I was sitting in Duania. I was looking at my app, okay, just to see my portfolio, and the Bitcoin was $1,200. At the beginning of the year, it was, I think, uh, $60, okay? I woke up the next day, and the market has crashed because of some China regulations, and it dropped down to $100, okay? So, you have to put stop loss you know, put your targets, but even if a stop loss is there, if nobody is buying, you cannot sell, right? So, and some things come in sudden, like these news, for example, if it's coming from China, usually the, 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 the news are, are sent in, in Chinese. So it takes time for somebody to pick it up, translate it, and send it across the English-speaking world, and then um, we feel the ripple effect. So whoever cashed out must have been in China first, and then a few inside sources, or who read Chinese. But uh, yeah, that, that, was a good, that was a good time to re-enter the market. How can we, excuse me? Uh, when do you recommend you have a wallet? And from where we can uh, purchase the hardware uh, wallet? If you search in Google for Ledger wallet, Okay, it's called Ledger Wallet. It's a French company. You can buy from them directly and they will ship to Kuwait directly. I had mine delivered within three days. Uh, when does it make sense? If you want to hold, if you don't want to trade, okay, but make sure that whatever coin you're buying is supported by Ledger Wallet first. So Ledger Wallet doesn't support everything. Only the few major stuff. But if you're buying, for example, see a coin, there's no option for you to use Ledger Wallet. Is there other uh, wallets you recommend for uh, CA coins, as an example? Hardware, there isn't, no. Okay. And I don't trust any other wallet, because by design, it is secure. Thank you very much. I have a technical question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the following the uh, Bitcoin ATM uh, uh, machine, you mentioned that uh, the full node, the size is getting bigger, bigger by, the, by the time. Uh, now it's uh, about uh, 50, 50, uh, 500 uh, gigabyte. Okay, what it will be on, on the future? Uh, because it's, it's going against the concept of the blockchain. The blockchain it must be distributed. Okay, uh, with the big size of the blockchain, uh, a few uh, a few ones will uh, hold on will hold the uh, full node. What's your opinion? And what's the solution? An 8 terabyte hard disk is 80 KD. If you are planning to operate a full node, it means you know what you're doing, and ATB is dirt cheap in comparison to what you're planning to do. So even at home, I have 24 TB. So I could keep running that for ages. And remember, the blockchain is expanding in size because of the transactions. If there are less transactions, it will not keep growing. And that's my view of Bitcoin. It will no longer be used as a transaction medium. It is being used only as a value of something to hold. So transactions are moving off to Ethereum, to Ripple, to Litecoin, and everywhere else. Okay. So, do, you, do you envision more uh, companies accepting cryptocurrencies as a form of payment? You mentioned Amazon. Amazon, to, Microsoft, and Dell. They already do. Yeah. Do you envision more companies accepting cryptocurrencies? 
Crypto so, currencies, yes. Maybe Bitcoin, no. Anymore, not anymore. But it makes sense. Uh, maybe for a public relation, you know, just for PR stunts. Um, why would you buy it using a cryptocurrency and then you have also the exchanges, etc., etc., unless you move into an ecosystem where they have, for example, San, San Francisco, certain restaurants only accept cash or cryptocurrency because they want to avoid uh, credit cards and the percentages they are losing to credit card companies. Uh, if the credit card is stolen, you, have, you, the merchant, are paying the fees and the penalties for all of that, so they want to avoid it. Keep in mind that cryptocurrency transactions are one way only. If I send money to a wrong address, I can never get that again. Just like if you leave money on a table or give cash to somebody and he just runs off, tough luck. It's like bearer form. Sorry? It's like bearer form. Yeah, yeah, like exactly, cash. yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think the lady had... And other stuff. Um, what about taxation? Is Bitcoin because it's connected to your bank account somewhere? That means it's it, you have to you have to show when you file your taxes in the countries where taxation exists. The U.S. government has sent a request to Coinbase, which is an exchange in the U.S., requesting uh, the earnings of 14,000 something Americans, how much they have made for I think it's since 2012 or 2013 to 2015 for a three year period. So certain, <clears throat> certain governments are taxing it, other governments are not, it depends. Yeah, so it is possible, yes. So for the poor Americans, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think you have an option, you have to pay the taxes. Even if you run off to Switzerland, Switzerland was strong armed by the US to give all the American passport holders information to the US Gov. Maybe if you go to Panama, etc., tax havens, then that might work out for you. Good luck, I don't know. Yes. Would you happen to know anything about ICO regulations in Kuwait? No. They aren't. Do you think there would be? What do you call it? The social media kind of regulation. We still lack a lot. And thoughts on uh, tokenizations for ICOs? Uh, same. same. All right. We Thank you. If they are operating in USD, they have to have financial regulations uh, against. Uh, anti-money laundry laws. There are exchanges that are registered under Delaware in the US. And if you look at their registrations, those companies are shell companies. And they are not using USD. They are using something called USDT, USD Tether. That is not a real US dollar. That's another cryptocurrency called USD Tether, where they wanted to link it as one-to-one -one with the USD. But they lied and its value fluctuated, okay? So it's okay to use it temporarily to shift between coins. But that means that those exchanges are intentionally not using USD to avoid US regulations. I mean, so a lot of platforms, if you actually look into it, they're actually licensed in uh, tax haven countries. Um, so like Greece, Panama, and other islands. So potentially you could wake up and you lose all your, you know, because your money is actually, so, a lot, uh, so my money is based on, you know, a platform. So the wallet is not owned by me, um, like, but rather by who owns the platform. So I could, you know, just pick up and lose all my money. That's the same case for Bitstamp, because the wallet is actually run by the exchange itself. However, that's why I said you have to find a reputable exchange where it adheres to laws. Uh, Bitstamp is created and is operating from Luxembourg. Okay, their bank account is in uh, Slovenia. Okay, and their head office is in London. So their head office is in London. They are regulated by UK laws. Their uh, operations are handled in Luxembourg. So they are under Luxembourg AML regulations, right? So you have to look up these things. I have had a few guys recommend a few hedge funds. Like, uh, we'll give you 50% a year and stuff like that. I told him, okay, give me the website. He gave me the website. There's no who is 
information, who is the owner of the domain. Uh, if you're running a business, you should keep that information public. And then I looked up where that corporate is registered. They had wrong information. And I found the actual information. It was under Delaware, uh, operated by an agent who creates shell companies. Yani, if you are going to put your money into something as shady as that, tough luck. So do you recommend cold storing your uh, currencies then? Your question is pointing at the hold thing. I said I will not give any financial advice. If you, say, if you think something is going to boom, okay, within a few years, you could hold that. Alternatively, you could trade it and make it more until it booms up, you know. Um, thank you, Majid. Uh, my name is Abdullah, everyone. Um, I have a question. You said like in a few years, maybe 10, 20, 30 years possibly, that uh, there would be no physical cash, just digital. Uh, what, does it, what difference does it make between the, uh, the digital cash and the uh, cryptocurrency? What's the difference between them? You missed the first uh, slide. The... Sweden is pushing Sweden and India are pushing away from uh, physical cash into digital cash simply to fight uh, money laundering uh, money uh, shark cloning etc all the bad businesses that are running there but it also kills off your privacy and freedom I can give you money now cash you can buy something and nobody would need to know what you bought right but if you move into a completely digital platform where you buy everything with credit cards or something or some form of digital uh, that is linked to your actual name, then you have no privacy. Everybody knows whatever you bought. A, bank's, uh, a bank gets uh, hijacked. They can have all the, all the uh, customer information published and then everybody would know everything. And if you're thinking that banks will not be hacked, this is a very bad nightmare that you should wake up from. Because banks have already been hacked in Qatar and in Oman. Credit cards have been stolen across the entire world. So I'm not a fan of digital, uh, digital only world. I prefer always to have an option where privacy is conserved. Yeah, I had a quick question. This is more of like a... Go ahead. No, that's fine. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, that's fine. You can go ahead. Yeah, it's more of like a macro question. So basically, uh, the way that you're describing the blockchain, there's a bunch of transactions that are made. The more transactions that are made, the more people have to validate those transactions, uh, thereby indicating a need for more Bitcoins to be made. Those uh, coins get paid to the people who are validating the transactions, correct? So the more transactions, the more Bitcoins. Um, do the purchases of Bitcoins by converting like uh, sovereign currency into Bitcoin, does that count as a transaction? Okay, so there's, there's not going to be extra. It has to be a, a good or a service exchanged. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin to Bitcoin only. Okay, yeah, that was my only question then. Yeah. Um, is this working? Okay, so I had a question about the bigger picture. So. Uh, you mentioned your disdain for Wall Street, and one of the reasons why uh, they're negative on Bitcoins and cryptocurrency, I guess, is because having a decentralized um, virtual currency, uh, you know, I, know, I think they're un it's unclear what are the mechanisms in place to safeguard against uh, illegal activity and uh, using the platform to uh, have a black market, and uh, such as drugs and substance abuse. So, for example, what do you do? You foresee any regulatory pressure in that side? Um, what, whether, and is that one of the reasons why you say you don't have long-term projections for Bitcoin? And my other questions is that you mentioned. Let me answer the first question, yeah. and I can answer the second. Yeah. My hatred for Wall Street has nothing to do with Bitcoin regulation. Oh, okay. If you look at multiple documentaries of what, has hap what had happened in 2008, mm. of the economical crash, it was specifically because Wall Street manipulated the ecosystem. They failed to do any, port any proper verification of the people who were taking loans, credits, yeah, etc. They manipulated the market, and the end, who lost? We lost. Mm. They got bailed out. All the CEOs, all the managers got their bonuses. Mm. We got nothing. People lost their jobs across the world. That's mm. why I hate Wall Street. It has nothing to do with the, with the cryptocurrencies. They are a bunch of manipulators who want to keep the money to themselves. 
So, does so that takes us to the next point. Yeah. They hate cryptocurrencies mm. because we are able to trade, we are able to exchange, we are able to profit beyond their control. Mm -hmm. They are not part of that profit system. Okay? I can make easily 20% to 50% every two weeks on my money. Mm. That is something they can never give you. Mm. Okay, trading is volatile. Even their stock trades are volatile, mm -hmm. so there's nothing solid, right? Mm -hmm. So that's my view on... So does this eliminate counterparty or default risk, since you mentioned the too big to fail incident in the global financial crisis? I have no clue what you just said. I'm not uh, a financial person. Oh, okay, well, I'm a financial yeah. person. <laughs> Please, to ask your question in simple terms, so I can answer you. But loads of people don't have cryptocurrency knowledge uh, either. That's why the first point I had on my slides on the tips is to avoid FUD. Never believe um, Wall Street bankers. Never. Okay? Always find solid source of information that somebody's giving you. They're telling you it's fraud. Tell me why it's fraud. What are your reasons? The U.S. government legalized it. Japan legalized it. Korea legalized it. Right? Germany, uh, Switzerland. If Switzerland is dealing with cryptocurrencies and they are the most fanatic people about money sources, it says a lot. Right? But, you know, so many people are actually jumping into cryptocurrency, but yeah. they don't actually understand the core concept of how blockchain works, That's how ledgers problem. work, how but, contracts I mean, work. You don't have to understand the whole technicality of something to trade. If yeah. you want to trade something, go ahead and trade it. Yeah. As long as you understand how to trade. If you don't know how to trade, then you should understand what you're trading. Okay, no, she has a second question. Uh, this is connected to what you're saying. Can I, can I go ahead? I just wanted to know, since a lot of people don't know and everybody is interested in the crypto uh, age, as you can see, what about careers in this? I mean, how can you train? How can you, you know, become yeah. part of the trader or the brokers or whatever? There are about? companies and universities around the world who are providing blockchain programming courses. Thanks. Behind you are two students from Kuwait University who are working on a blockchain project, and I wish them the best, okay? Uh, UAE had a company come over and do a crash course for multiple developers, and they picked the winners of that uh, crash course to start a company. There is high demand on this new technology, okay, as the blockchain, not cryptocurrencies. We'll talk about the blockchain only. Right? So there's very high demand on that, and it's, it makes sense for all of things, but not everything. So some people try to shove it into healthcare kind of things. That's a big no-no. You cannot have people's personal information available publicly. Yeah, your second question? Yeah, when you commented uh, that you don't uh, see the long-term prospects of Bitcoin, were you referring to or um, implying that uh, mm. you see the regulatory pressure coming no, to play? No, no. Uh, Bitcoin is already regulated as much as it needs to be. There's no more regulation that needs to be applied on top. The reason I'm saying there's no long-term forecast, in my opinion, for blockchain, I think a lot of people would disagree as well, is it has reached its peak. It's too slow to send transactions. It's too expensive to enter. Okay? And uh, the politics are too heavy between the U.S. teams, the China teams, and all the people mixed in the middle. It's a very big mess. Right? So that's why I don't see a uh, future roadmap for it for the next five years. Maybe for next year, a few things. I, I had one last question, if possible. So you mentioned that you can't really uh, analyze it as its own asset class. You can't analyze the fundamentals. So it's mainly a momentum play in just the pricing of supply and demand. So can you just use the technical indicators? Because you said you could consult a trader. So it's mainly just the technical indicators that predict the price changes. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Anybody who's doing trading is looking at the charts, looking at the candlesticks, yeah. and making sure where to enter, uh, when it's going to go up, when it's going to go down. These still apply. Because it's a supply and demand system at the end, and it's a trading platform, so the charts apply, uh, as long as things make sense, right? Nobody could, could have seen $11,500 this year. Thank you. Questions? So you're saying uh, several companies are actually selling real products and, uh, and cryptocurrencies. 
And given that the cryptocurrency can change in, uh, in price very quickly, so suppose Dell is selling a laptop uh, for $1,000 and uh, assuming Bitcoin price, like one Bitcoin is $1,000, so that's one Bitcoin. Um, so let's say overnight uh, the prices shoot up, shoot down. Uh, do these companies quickly change prices or how, how does it go? They use a payment processor called BitPay, I think if I'm not mistaken, and what they do is that BitPay locks the price of Bitcoin for a specific period of time. So when you browse the website, it will tell you that this price is valid for X number of minutes. After that, the price changes. It could go up, could go down. Okay? Sorry, I own the mic, can I? Uh, you said uh, that some governments are releasing their own currencies. Uh, what does that mean? How this will affect the Bitcoin? Is it a centralized, decentralized, and uh, there are uh, well, if we compare it to some other currencies like OneCoin mm. that act like a Benzo scheme, uh, do they do they have future in this field, those type of uh, currencies? The governments releasing cryptocurrencies for local use have nothing to do with the global ones. The governments simply want to either do a PR stunt, public relations stunt, or they want to make uh, transfers faster rather than going through banks and waiting for settlements. If I want to send you money and we are on different banks, you have to wait for the next day, right? If everything and everybody is connected through a local currency blockchain-based payment system, okay, then if I transfer something to you, you will see it immediately. And there's, there's compromisation there then. They're losing some bank's fees, bank benefits. No, uh, no. Again, your, your money is with the bank. When one bank needs to send to another bank, they're sending using the cryptocurrency, just like what Ripple is trying to do. But this is done on a local uh, scene, okay, inside the country only. So the systems are only accessible inside Kuwait. The banks can still apply their own fees. So they're not losing anything. What they are doing is only give you a speed of access to money, which they should, be, they should have done since Adopting 2010. the technology, that's it. Yeah. Sorry? Adopting the technology, that's it. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. Just take the money and put it on top of the blockchain and you're good to go. But what about one coin? I heard that there's uh, some currency. Never heard of it. Mm. They use like a Penzo scheme, yani, like you buy. It has, uh, they claim that they have the Yeah, yeah Ponzi schemes are everywhere. Mm. Scams are everywhere. ICO scams are everywhere. That's why I warn everybody to read about the project before putting money into it. Actually, um, two months ago, a coworker asked me, I showed me a screen where there was an ICO that was going to close in a day. And he was asked me, should I, buy, should I buy this? I told him, show me the white paper. I went through the white paper, which was like 20 pages of some management presentation. It was crap. And I told him, this is a scam. Don't go into it. And even if it's legit, wait until they actually produce a product, make a prototype, then you invest into it. Then you make sure these guys are not scammers. Yes, you might have, you might have uh, missed out on uh, 50 times profit, Okay, but you saved your money. Uh, that's my opinion. You had three questions, let someone else. Okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll Just to give more, uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, hello. Yeah, actually, I want to know, like, there is a lot of uh, Bitcoin, uh, debit cards and credit cards. So, like the Spectro coin, it's like they're having the debit cards and they say like you can withdraw the money all around the world. So if we use here in Kuwait, so it is legal or illegal? Like uh, we're not having the account in our bank and the blocks, like we, we withdraw the money. So can you tell me about it? First of all, Visa is canceling most of the cryptocurrency worldwide uh, affiliations. Most. A lot of the guys I know from the Cryptomina Telegram group, they're saying that their cards are being cancelled because of visa regulations. MasterCard must have been, uh, uh, I'm sure they're going to follow uh, suit as well. Um, you should not use debit cards or credit cards to withdraw your money. You are losing at least 3%. And if they are telling you they have a scheme to pay you back by holding more uh, coins, that's a Ponzi scheme. You should not agree to that. Avoid that kind of coin. Okay. Questions? Again? <laughs> so, again, you might have mentioned this in your first uh, slide. I might have missed it. Um, during the whole, on the bigger picture, uh, if you look into the Bitcoin, 
the whole point of it was, you know, to fight against the, the huge pay gap and, you know, how the 1% uh, pretty much own, you know, the majority of the, the cash reserves. So at the moment as well, you know, how a few computer scientists and miners could actually just, you know, mine uh, bitcoins or cryptocurrency. But at the same time, you know, the eventual aim and goal is to have an equal distribution of, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies uh, and other things, you know, to make it safe and secure and anonymous to a point. But how do you think, are we going to reach a point where, you know, everyone's going to have, move on to a cryptocurrency based, uh, you know. Um, Global adoption? Yeah, and uh, only at that point it's going to be equal-ish. And I don't see how that's going to work. That's out. not going to happen. No. The people, the people with the money move the market. So now you have a chance to make money while you still can. I'm sure the big money uh, market makers are gonna get into the, uh, just, like, just like they entered with Bitcoin and shut up the price to 11 and a half K, okay? If there's money there, they will get into the uh, scene. So while we still can, we should trade as fast as possible. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I want to make myself a nice profit while I still can. Because I know sooner or later, making profits out of trades is going to dwindle with time. Uh, however, using the cryptocurrencies in our daily lives, I think it will be more acceptable with time. I think maybe we need six years to eight years just to see things in our daily lives, not in our region, most likely, maybe in Europe and USA, where the adoption is already there just like when you are buying um, food with Bitcoin. But you need, uh, whatever cryptocurrency they choose, it needs to be something that is stable, that has a stable price. Uh, Bitcoin is fluctuating by $1,000 every hour. That's a huge fluctuation. So realistically, this is just the next boom, you know, to take the opportunity. This right? is the new internet. Yeah. Yes. Did you... uh, yes. Don't you think now is the best time for mining uh, for no. Bitcoin? Because of Bitcoin, the value is high, and if you mine now some devices, it can cost you 1,000 dinar if you, if you mine with it, like anti mining is fine, you know, boy. So I'm thinking, you know, my friend, to start mining with this device. Before long, in, in August, it was kind of uh, risky because uh, the Bitcoin value is really down. But I think it's uh, mining right now for Bitcoin better than investing it. What do you think about it? The early bird gets the worm. You are too late to the party. Oh. And I mentioned the mining, if you are not doing large scale mining, yeah. it doesn't make sense. There was a, an interview with a guy who owns a mining facility in Iceland. Okay. He has literally a data center equivalent to that of Google. Okay, and the location, <coughs> the location was hidden because they didn't want any physical attacks on the, onto the facility. His electricity bill alone per month was 1 million euro. I think That's the electricity bill for a mining facility. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to just, uh, I want you to imagine with me how large that facility is and how much power it's consuming. Okay, that he is actually now making money. Now keep in mind, miners don't mine a single coin. As soon as the price of a coin drops, that it's no longer uh, profitable to mine that coin, they shift to something else immediately. Otherwise, they will not be able to stay operational. So they have to build a facility where they can mine multiple coins. So when Bitcoin started, we were mining with CPUs and then graphics cards with GPUs, and then ASICs came out, the specifically designed hardware, just like S9 Ant miners. Yeah. Okay, if you want a profit, a friend, a coworker, was asking me for the past three months, I want to put money, I'm, I'm going to invest 50,000 KD. How do you are insane? Open a calculator, a profitability calculator, look at how much money you're going to close. He's, he was going to pay 50,000 KD or more, sorry, 300,000 KD, Okay, at the end of the year, do you know how much profit he was going to make? He was going to make 15,000 KD. That's not including the facility, that's not including the electricity, that's not including the cooling and the cooling equipment, etc. Right, and all the overhead of managing all of that and the internet link. You need a stable internet link for all the uploads and all the downloads, you can't have latency. Yeah, we can. It's easy and quick. It's uh, not, it's not. The, no, electricity is fine, but where's your internet connection? You need a stable connection. 
DSL is crap, 4G is crap. The only uh, option you have is fiber. So you need a place that has fiber with a warehouse. Good luck. It's not profitable. Maybe something else that you mine and you keep and wait for the price to go up, then you sell off. But that means you are mining at no profit for X number of months, years, whatever it is. It's up to you. Use online calculators and do your own math. Obviously, the miners are making money. Otherwise, they wouldn't be running all this ecosystem. But they're making money because they have very vast systems. Right? Yeah. I can defer. Two practical questions. Uh, one, you, you, in terms of bit fix. Bit fills. Bit fills. Fills, yes. Pardon me. Um, you're, against hard, you're against wallets on your phone. So if you don't have a nano or a ledger, then what do you suggest a person use? You're going to buy from Bitfills? Yes. You don't want to trade? No. Okay, then you have to keep it somewhere. Right. Uh, you either have a software running on your laptop or preferably an isolated machine, a cheap laptop, whatever it is, something you can get for 50 KD. And I just make sure it's up to date and it's disconnected from the internet, and you don't do any browsing on that machine. You simply download the wallet, you sync it to the network, and that's it. You only do cryptocurrency transactions on that machine and nothing else. You don't browse your email, you don't browse anything else on that machine. Okay? That's from a security point of view. Uh, otherwise, you get the ledger. Okay. Yeah. And you don't advise a paper wallet? Oh, no, no, no. That's a very bad idea. Okay. Because if you lose that wallet, if it burns, if it uh, gets eaten, then you lose everything. Very last question, um, and this is a technical question. So if you do a local Bitcoin and you find someone who's selling, what is the actual process? How do you know that it is legit? I'll keep asking questions if you don't take it. <laughs> you cannot know if somebody is legit or not unless you deal with them. So usually, I think local Bitcoin has a reputation scoring system. Um, I did not use it. But I did a transaction with one of the guys in the Cryptomina group. We did not meet face to face. Simply from the history of chatting with these guys, I decided to trust this guy. He told me he had a few ethers to sell, some Ethereum. And uh, he sent me a link to pay him. And I used my Canet to pay him over. And he transferred, it to, uh, he transferred the ethers to an address that I gave him. So it's a trust-based uh, approach. Even if it's face to face, Okay, he could transfer you the coins before you pay him cash, and then you could run off. So he also has no um, guarantee that you're going to pay him. Or maybe you don't even have cash to pay him, right? And keep in mind, you have to keep in mind the, lo <coughs> the local laws of how much cash you can transact into a person-to-person -person, uh, operation. There might be some restrictions on stuff that are larger than 10,000 KD or 30,000 KD. Yeah? So also check about these things. Hi. Uh, I have a question. I saw a documentary about a guy who's trying to live in Bitcoin for one week. And uh, it worked all fine in New York. And there's a whole big market in New York, uh, in Wall Street, uh, that they sell and buy Bitcoin, uh, Mithil Mazad, yeah. uh, at Bitcoin. Do you see, like, in the future, this kind of market, uh, uh, Mazad, uh, it's going to be somewhere in this region, or it's going to be like somewhere, it's exactly, it's going to be the same as stock markets, how people are buying? That's what Yalla Bit is going to have. It is, you don't need to um, have an auction on coins, because an auction, Mazad, means that this is a commodity, something you own, okay, just like a car or a chicken or whatever it is, and you're auctioning it off, and somebody else is buying. A coin is a coin. It should be used as a currency, unless it is not designated to be a currency by its own owners. You have exchanges. Yalla Bit is going to open. You have Bitstamp. You have many others. Uh, you can buy your currencies from there. I don't see a reason why somebody is auctioning off uh, Bitcoin. It doesn't make sense to me. But in the other thing, when uh, you said in the newspaper it's written, Bank of Marquesi, uh, Yeah. Uh, it's not a lot of bitcoins. Mm. I really think because I heard because I own a coffee shop and uh, I heard few laws and I'm not allowed to sell my coffee like mm. to sell any product without a dinar Kuwaiti. Lazim uh, Lazim dinar Kuwaiti. I cannot just uh, sell it uh, with uh, 
Bitcoin or any kind of uh, currency. So that I think that's why they said it's not allowed. It's not that doesn't mean it's not allowed. I own it. Yeah. No, the title strictly says central bank bans Bitcoin. يحضر استخدام Bitcoin. Literally. Okay. So the title was extremely misleading. The actual text in the article had no proof to that title. There's no link. It was a clickbait uh, news post. Uh, in terms of um, using the bitcoins, I, mean, uh, I can give you my phone and you could give me any other item and we would call it a transaction. The central bank has nothing to do with our personal transaction. Okay. Um, I think what Kuwait might adopt is similar to what the U.S. has done, is treat Bitcoin as a commodity, not as a currency. So when Bitfils is selling you Bitcoins, they're selling you something to hold and own, not a currency. So that's why the bank would uh, allow this to happen. Okay? That doesn't mean it's illegal. It is simply how the government decides to label these cryptocurrencies. Uh, my question is uh, uh, with regards to trading perspective, is there a way to identify which exchange is more credible and how can we know if the exchange is going to go bust or no? If the price of crypto coins on an exchange is quite higher than the other ones, there's some sh something shady going on. Okay, so if the percentage difference is like 2%, 5%, there's something off going on. Uh, people used to call that arbitrating. So, for example, I would buy on a cheap exchange and then send my money off or my crypto coins to uh, the higher exchange and cash out there. Okay, that used to happen in the old times before exchanges had a way to synchronize with themselves for the prices. But if the price is too high, they're doing something shady and that's what BTCE was doing. Their prices are much higher than everybody else just to attract people to use their platform to do the money laundry. Okay, last question. Are there any altcoins which are correlated in terms of price movement with bitcoins or are they all not relevant to bitcoin movement at all? That's all. It was, um, but since bitcoin is the dominant, whenever bitcoin moves up, the money moves into bitcoin so people sell off the altcoins, the alternative other coins, right? So usually when Bitcoin shoots up very fast, you see everything else going down. But at certain times when Bitcoin is increasing gradually, let's say for example from 10K to 11K, you see the other coins also going up. That means somebody is investing in the whole ecosystem, not only Bitcoin. And this has been happening quite more often recently, that we see Bitcoin going up and all the altcoins are also going up. But uh, when a fork happens, for example, for Bitcoin Cash, for Bitcoin Gold, everybody was holding, holding their coins to get credit for the other uh, forks or the other coins. So that's where sometimes you see the altcoins going up and the Bitcoin also going up because simply people are holding, nobody's selling off. So the supply is low, the demand is high. Sure. Right. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vipul. Uh, Can you? My name is Vipul. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, understanding here that the basic the price of a Bitcoin is because of the supply and demand. And the supply is limited by the computing power or as you mentioned, the fiber, the network. What is stopping a company like Amazon, which is the, one of the top three or four companies and is a secure, stable exchange also? If they start bit, uh, mining bitcoins, let's say after five years, what will be the low point for the other exchanges and the bitcoin value? When bitcoin was being mined by graphics cards, some people did start using Amazon briefly for mining bitcoin. But it became um, uh, quite prohibitive in terms of cost to keep running on Amazon platform. But Amazon itself, could start mining and there's nothing stopping it from doing that. The question is why? Amazon is not in the business of currencies or these things. They are in the business of reaching the end consumer. Anything that deals with us as consumers. So they would use it as a currency for you to pay with. But I don't see why they would enter a business uh, 
as we are uh, sorry to interrupt as we are seeing that the value of the bitcoin itself is rising so that itself gives them a reason to actually enter into the market of mining it was and rising since 2010 yes it is not only now rising uh, and everybody who was mining since 2010 was also profiting because i'm not let's say i have friends years. i don't know if, uh, if they're still here or not but i have friends here who have been mining on their processors on crap laptops right. and he was profiting okay and i one of the guys in duania he made enough bitcoins and he cashed out and he bought a whole pc with the money he made out of bitcoins another guy bought a domain a website website name with bitcoins he was crying <laughs> when the price is hit two thousand dollars because he paid he paid i think um, 30 or 40 bitcoins but all this right? is all this value actually is based on a premise that the computing is limited and the supply is limited <clears throat> no 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 the asset miners did not exist before there's nothing stopping anybody from creating a new technology for computation that would Correct. become better. But one of the four top companies, if they start computing and start mining, what no. would be the lowest no. point? You cannot use normal computers anymore for Bitcoin specifically. I'm you have to use dedicated company. hardware that was designed specifically to mine Bitcoin. That's why many alternative cryptocurrencies are moving away from the algorithm that is used for mining so that they break the Chinese market on these ASIC miners. They are moving off to either CPU mining or GPU, graphics card mining. <coughs> Since you mentioned it, one of the cryptographers that I follow uh, tweeted two days ago that he has created a new hash algorithm for the mining process that is uh, anti-quantum but nobody cared he was very sad that nobody cared right but uh, these are being invented these are coming along quantum computing is still a long way from becoming mainstream next uh, year it's actually no 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 mainstream currently the only people who have usable quantum computing are google and ibm okay and their quantum computing are 16 qubits maximum so that's even not usable ibm will roll out 50 qubit system soon but that will be hosted by them for you to use remotely you will not have it it's a still fridge based system that you have to cool down the atoms to um, almost zero degrees kelvin which is minus 270 degrees celsius you can't host that at home it's not yet mainstream so we are still far away but the ma uh, the mathematics and cryptography um, guys are already developing uh, algorithms that are anti-quantum whether it's for cryptocurrencies or also for our daily encryption can i ask two final questions um do you believe we're in a cryptocurrency bubble is the first question and the second question do you expect bitcoin etfs to hit the market um uh, bubbles yes we are having a bitcoin bubble other cryptocurrencies are not having a bubble. They are having organic growth. Okay, if you look at charts, whatever it is, you don't see spikes. You see natural growth. Hmm. So that's in terms of growth. Hmm. What was the second question? Um, do, you, do you think uh, Bitcoin ETFs, exchange traded funds, will hit the market? Um, I read some news. I don't quite understand what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in, in USA. They have not yet been allowed by yeah. the SEC. Okay, so that's the regulatory body in the US. They're not yet allowed to go live. There was a lot of bets that these would go live and the price would shoot up, but that didn't happen yet. Yet. Thank you. Sorry? I follow a lot of guys. I'll have to check my history oh, to no, find the, this. The name. one you mentioned about the hash algorithm. And yeah, yeah, I have to All go right. back to my history. I don't right. have them at the top of my head. Any more questions? Thank you very much.